Hey guys, so in all honesty, this is the third time I've tried to make this video and the first was because my cat was being a butt and then my son was being a butt, so I'm really hoping that I can be articulate just to completely throw this out here in the beginning and warn you guys. Uh, anyway, so I thought with Samhain coming up that I would do a video on ancestral work or ancestral worship and kind of cover the how and why I specifically do it and I also want to preference this with how I do things is not an end-all say-all so please just take that to heart and just roll with what you want to do and how things work for you so I started ancestral work worship probably uh, this is not my day <laughs> probably um about six years ago and it was mostly because i was having so many experiences with my grandfather after he passed in 2009 that i would talk to him and i just thought okay well i'm just gonna set up a space in my house and the other reasons why I wanted to do this is because I was kind of influenced culturally from a few other cultures. One of which being, when I was a kid, um, I have two aunts who are Hispanic and they would celebrate Dia de, Dia de Muertos. And so I always found that holiday very fascinating and I kind of just loved, I loved the Mexican cultures take on death. So, and the other cultural influence was from my time in Japan. So, in Japan, uh, Shin Shinto, they have what's called a, a kamidana, which basically is just roughly translates to God Shelf, and it is a small little shrine that is put up inside the house where they usually leave offerings for the dead and they will often do this and speak to them and commune with them and i just found it beautiful and we do this this is something that's really common in our culture as well in western culture people go to grave sites and they leave offerings flowers and they will just sit and talk to the dead and I was actually, I just read an article recently that it is so, it is very therapeutic to do so. So I highly encourage it for anybody who's going through loss. This is something that I am dealing with very heavily right now too. So I have had two major losses in the last year. And, um, you know, um, my grandfather, it will be 10 years this coming January and it still hurts like it did yesterday so I think that setting up an ancestral shrine and sitting and communing with those who have left you or have left this world I don't think they necessarily leave us they just leave this world is it's something very profound so and I believe you can do this with pets as well so my ancestral altar is actually behind me on my bookshelf. As you can see, my bookshelf is right above my shoulder there. It's, and I've shared it in my um, altar tour video. I think it's the second one, part two. On my shrine is photos of those who've passed as well as just little mementos and trinkets, things that maybe have belonged to them or things that I think represent them. And I, leave offerings. I have a candle that's dedicated to ancestral work that I only light when I'm doing it. I, on Samhain, I actually put up an altar on my dining room table and I have a lantern that I light only when I am either remembering or honoring someone who has passed or if someone recently has passed then I leave it lit for the whole day pretty much. Bearing in mind fire safety, of course, but um, especially even with um, even with someone I know who's, who has lost someone, I will usually light this lantern for them as well. So that's another thing that I do. 
and um, kind of I kind of want to go into why I do this or what I I get from it um, what really I think draw me well I've already explained what drew me to it but why I do it why I do it is because aside from it being therapeutic to speak to the dead I also think that you can have a lot you can draw a lot of power from your ancestors from those who came before you and it can even be well well before well back in your family lineage and not even in your family lineage i would highly suggest communing with those you've lost that have just made an impact on you because we all make an impact on somebody and i suppose that's what we hope to do when we leave this world make an impact on someone um hopefully positive of course but it's silly because I want to describe the one thing that really kind of helped paint my uh, ideal of ancestral worship. And it's funny because it comes from a movie. If you guys have ever seen the Disney movie Moana, it's about the daughter of a chief who goes on a voyage across the ocean to return a stone to kind of awaken the the mother goddess it's it's funny because you know you look at it and it's it's definitely um from another culture but it just you look at it as a pagan and you're like yeah this makes sense <laughs> but there is a scene where she is standing on the boat on her boat in the middle of the ocean and her ancestors are all with her and it's a very like i get really emotional watching it i cry but i i cry at movies generally because I'm so sensitive but I cried when I saw this because I felt like it after that she felt empowered she felt like she could do the task that needed to be done and I that's what I see when I see ancestral work that is why I do it is because having having the spirits or your ancestors there and feeling like they have your back and that they can help guide you that's powerful it is really powerful and i feel that it is it's profound it gives you a sense of belonging and i think i think for those who don't have a a strong connection with their family be it you're adopted or you've just decided to walk away from a toxic family situation you can still do ancestral work you can still talk to the dead you can still be a part of this it's not exclusive so i want to definitely point that out too but yeah i just there's there's a lot of power to be had with it and i think that it's something that if you're curious to do I would recommend putting up an altar and having a space in your home that welcomes those who you have lost and sit and chat, talk with them, light a candle, have a, have some tea, have a drink. <sighs> my cat just jumped up on my computer. But anyway, this is the one that was being a pain in the butt and this is the reason why I had to film this video again. But I'm hoping that this makes sense and that I'm not too scatterbrained because it's really hard to try and make a video and then just try and reiterate again. It's it's frustrating, but it happens to the best of us. So anyway, blessed be, guys. I hope you're having a wonderful October. I hope you're having a good week. I am slowly preparing for Samhain. It's just kind of a slow build for me. It's I'm super excited. But yes, I hope this makes sense. You guys are all awesome. Let's be.